for the so-called black population of the United States. The right to vote has always been more of a privilege than a right. Local municipalities have been busy coming up with ways to dilute the impact of the African American vote. Personally, I'm still not 100% sold on voting being a solution to combat systemic racism, even though I am a registered voter myself. If we desire to accomplish anything through the ballot box, it is imperative that we vote as a collective. We can no longer afford to function as a box of nails, being hammered all over a wall to hold it up. We must become a mallet, wielded with intention to demolish the barriers that constrain us, keep us boxed into societal conditions that have plagued us for generations. With that said, here are some of the things that black people as a collective should require of any candidate claiming to want our vote. Number one, reparations. Reparations has been a hot topic among African Americans lately. The hashtag ADOS movement campaign has been spreading. Along with it, the idea that African Americans should be given monetary reparations on behalf of their ancestors, who suffered greatly during the slave era. Even after slavery was abolished in 1865, our ancestors still stayed under constant threat of lynch mobs, unfair treatment by the justice system, Jim Crow legislation, as well as attacks by the United States government meant to exterminate, sterilize, and re-enslave us. Many of the Democratic candidates going after the black vote say that they are in favor of a study on the effects of these things on African Americans as the first step of implementing reparations. But let's be real for two seconds. All of the injustices mentioned here have already been studied and placed in textbooks for elementary school students. They take tests on this stuff and then go out into the world and witness firsthand the two Americas. The poor, under-resourced and over-policed are here. And the fully funded, generationally wealthy are over there. And true, the argument could be made by whites that blacks need to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. But if many of us don't have boots to begin with, what do you propose then? Don't forget that your boots were made for free by the hands of African slaves. Number two, criminal justice reform. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, there are 2.2 million people behind bars in the United States. African Americans are only 13% of the US population, but we are about 40% of people incarcerated in the United States. What type of government drops cocaine in the middle of a community, then declares a war on drugs? Also, as of lately, new stories are emerging daily of black men being exonerated for crimes after spending decades in prison. It seems that justice is not blind. It wields a gavel at the African-American community with impunity. From Emmett Till in 1955 to today, where racist whites feel as if they have the right to call police on black people for simply walking down the street, patronizing a local business, or maintaining their yard, in many of these instances, the police show up and embarrass and humiliate these people who have done nothing but exercise their freedom. Number three, respect for black culture. In the 1990s, Bill Clinton was affectionately known among some African Americans as the first black president. This was because he came from a single parent home, played jazz on his saxophone, and made the world news for cheating on his wife with a White House intern. But while Clinton had huge support in the African American community, he showed his gratitude by signing a crime bill responsible for incarcerating mass amounts of blacks today. It's disappointing and downright scary that blacks can be swooned into voting for someone that seems to love black people because they can imitate what they believe is our culture. More disheartening is the fact that we encourage it. In 15 years after leaving office, his wife, former First Lady Hillary Clinton, ran for president. Her platform didn't have any ideas for improving conditions for African Americans, whose children were being slaughtered by police almost daily on the nightly news. But she wanted to make sure we knew she was interested in the latest hip-hop dances. This was the same person that referred to black children in high crime areas as super predators in 1996. With today's push to profile black people based on their style of dress, discriminate against them for their hairstyles, and ultimately a media campaign that props up a new blackface movement, 
It is imperative that any candidate courting the black vote is sensitive to these issues concerning African American culture. What do you think? Please leave your comments below. All views are welcome. I only request that you refrain from use of profanity or name calling. Children may be watching. If you find this video educational, please like, subscribe, and most of all share. Thank you for watching.